Mansell's own large 460s, the Nelsons, had been rebuilt by his successor, Bullitt, whose own remarkable Pacifics burst upon the scene in 1941. The locomotive is a merchant navy, and the train is the down Bournemouth Bell. The first ten merchants were built in the darkest days of the war, apparently contrary to all government directives to build only locomotives suitable for the war effort. Bullard claimed they were mixed traffic engines and built ten more in 1945, during which year the first of a smaller version, the so-called Light Pacifics of the West Country class, appeared. This one has an up west of England Express. Mansell's Mobiles were the real mixed traffic engines of the Southern. This U-Class displays British Railways in fall on its temper, in the Southern sunshine lettering, a style introduced by Bullard, who was nothing if not a publicist. The war had slowed the Southern's electrification plans, which would have seen the replacement of the elderly pre-grouping 440s by electrics, which gave Bullard the opportunity to produce his specifics to fill the gap. There was no denying that Mansell's Lord Nelson's needed replacement on the top services, even after Bullitt had modified them with new cylinders and blast pipes, but the requirement for 140 Pacifics was never proven. It became something of a legend that they were used on one-coach trains in the West Country, especially on the Padstow Line. By comparison with other railways, the Southern had little freight, and few dedicated freight engines. The Bullet Pacifics were never seen on regular freight duties, for which they were entirely unsuitable, whatever Bullet said. The air-smoothed casing, not streamlining, was designed for cleaning in a carriage washer, although, once again, uh, there seems little evidence that they ever went near one. They were probably twice as powerful as the engines they supposedly replaced, which included Drummond's various 440s and his famous pedal box 460s, one of which is seen here, on a rare working day. Basingstoke was an important railway crossroads. Not only was it the effective junction for the Bournemouth and West England end lines, but a cross-country line connected it to Reading and the Western. These are Bournemouth to Waterloo line trains, designated by the white discs displayed at the front of the locomotive. The southern region of British Railways, as the Southern Railway became, continued the use of head coat discs to the end of steam. The single disc on this class H15 chonker indicates a direct train from Southampton terminus to Waterloo, and one over each buffer signifies an inter-regional train to Reading and the Western. The system was also adopted for use with electric stock using a two-digit code, which remains in use today. The Mansell moguls were used on locos on the main line, which was quadruple track from here to the terminus at Waterloo. Expresses used the two centre roads, depicted here by an up west of England express, headed by one of the wartime merchant navies. The most famous west of England train was the Atlantic Coast Express, which follows an up Salisbury stopper behind a west country. During the summer months, and especially on summer Saturdays, there seemed to be an unending succession of Atlantic Coast Expresses. The third and fourth coaches are a pair of Bullitt's Tavern cars, which became more notorious than his locomotives. The Tavern cars themselves were designed to look like a traditional English pub inside, and the restaurant cars, Tavern trailers, had very small windows, to which the passengers took an instant dislike. They were rebuilt. Ten more merchant navies were built after nationalisation, most of which ran on the Western Division. Three were posted to the Eastern Division for use on the cross-channel boat trains, where they supplanted the Lord Nelsons. This Drummond L12 had also worked on the Eastern Division before the war, whilst this is one of Mansell's ten original King Arthurs, often used on through trains to the Western. They were shedded at Salisbury. Great Western Falls were also familiar on through trains to Reading, but this one has LSWR non-corridor local stock. There now follows the Pierre de Resistance of our visit, the Devon Bell.
This short-lived all-Pullman train only ran from 1947 to 1954. Its most notable feature was the specially built observation car at the back, two of which were built. Another interregional train enters Basingstoke behind the Lord Nelson, and our cameraman joins it to go home. However, he returns later in the year to record another interregional train, this time behind an M15 or UV Arthur. The GWR coaches have received a coat of blood and custard, unlike the southern stock behind a classmate on an up west of England extra which passes on stock. Basingstoke Shed provides the backdrop as a new Battle of Britain approaches from Bournemouth.